In my experience, I think there are two types of people who learn Blender. Type 1. Those who solely want to use Blender as a vessel for their artistic practice and nothing else. Whether they want to do VFX, 3D sculpting, animation, whatever, Blender and 3D at large is their creative outlet. And Type 2. Those who start Blender with the thought in the back of their mind, maybe I can make video games with this. The phrasing of a statement like that might have you wondering, am I in the good half or the bad half of those types? And I just want to say, relax, they're both good. But if you are in the second category, wonderful. I think that's a fantastic place to be, especially if you want to learn game development. Knowing where you are is half the battle. A year ago, I found myself in the same position. I knew that I wanted to make games, and little did I know that Blender was a perfect entry point for me to get serious about game development. In this video, I will be talking about some reasons why I think it's incredibly helpful to learn Blender before getting into game development, and how by learning Blender first, you have a serious advantage when it comes to your personal game development journey. Also, I want to make it clear that when I say learn Blender first, you can substitute Blender with anything game development related, whether that be coding, animation, or even pen and paper game design. But more on that later. So these two arbitrary types of people that I mentioned before, what about them? For a long time, I convinced myself that I was a part of that first group, that I was a person who only wanted to be a 3D artist, nothing more. Now, I love Blender with all my heart, but that heart happens to be located within myself, which I know very well. And I know that I have never been satisfied just pursuing one artistic medium. However, I told myself, that for the time being, I would focus solely on Blender, which I promptly broke several times to have brief stints of music making, podcasting, and comics. But I always returned to Blender as my main focus during said time being, which turned out to be close to three years. In that time, I came away with three short films, a couple of music videos, and the opportunity to work with a hero of mine. All of this culminated in probably the best thing I have done as an artist, my short film, Psychic Sauna, which still exists, by the way. It's sitting at a staggering 833 views right now. I put 13 months of my life into a four minute long short. If you're at all interested, I think you could check it out, please. It's statistically better than probably like a third of YouTube reels. Tonetta's in it, for God's sakes. Just watch it, huh? I was inspired to make this video the other day when I found myself flipping through an old notebook of mine from about five years ago. In it, I found pages upon pages of plans, stories, and scenarios for a game. Mechanics were designed, characters' backstories were written, sketches of levels filled the pages. It was all manifesting so quickly I could barely contain myself. The only thing that I couldn't make into a reality was an actual game. After months of planning, I don't even think I opened a game engine. It was an idea that I told people I was going to do. Nothing more. By the end, the game became fooling myself into thinking I would actually make it. This wasn't the first time I had been through this cycle. I can think of at least three other fully realized game projects that never left notebooks off the top of my head. The desire was there, but I always let myself get distracted by other pursuits. Comics, music, installations, whatever caught my attention at that passing moment. Anything that could take me away from the elephant in the room that was game development. Looking back on it now, I understand why this kept happening. Games are really hard, and I was scared. Games are the most complex art form we've created thus far. Especially if you are a solo developer like myself, there's just so much to do, so much to learn. It's nearly impossible to wrap your head around every aspect of game development. When you're confronted with so many unknowns at once, it becomes way easier to get distracted by one thing that seems approachable. Unknowingly, this cycle is what eventually led me to committing to game development fully, and it just might be helpful to you as well. 
Blender started out as one of these distractions. If I recall correctly, around that time I was wavering back and forth between half starting a 2D adventure game slash visual novel and music. 2.8 had just come out and I decided to check it out. Right from the beginning, this distraction felt different. I felt like I had found my medium. 3D was going to be a part of my creative practice for the rest of my life. I feel more confident in my skills as a 3D modeler than probably any other medium I've pursued in the past. I feel like I can express myself fully through this medium. However, even with these realizations, the question still lingered. Maybe I can make video games with this. In early September 2022, I decided that I was ready to fully dedicate myself to game development. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I was going to complete a game that was truly mine. After nearly 14 months of confusion, struggle, and joy, I am finally able to announce. With Shining Eyes is a short, single-player adventure game where you solve puzzles, explore the history of the prestigious Bellamy Academy, and learn about its current headmaster, Anya Ashby. The game is currently available to wishlist on Steam and will be released early next year for free. It really does feel good to announce that. I'm very much a believer in going with the feeling, especially in matters of creativity. Things should feel natural. That doesn't mean that things won't be hard, but the difficulty has to be embraced as a natural part of the process. Venturing into new territories comes with difficulty. It's an unavoidable part of the process. Game development sometimes feels like nothing but day after day of venturing into new, difficult territories. But having an anchor to provide some stability, especially as a solo developer, will get you through those hard times. For me, that anchor was Blender. Before we go any further, I have a couple things I would like to address. For the sake of transparency, I am not starting game dev completely from scratch. I had some professional programming and game engine experience with various jobs in the past. However, I didn't actually enjoy programming up until recently, but that's another story. Up until this point, it had always been my intention to create an independent video game on my own. There is a huge difference between making something for your job and making something for yourself. In a professional setting, there are external pressures that force you to do something. When you are an independent game developer, the only pressure you have is internal. Before we get into the advice portion of the video, I just want to say, I'm just a guy. I have some experiences that you don't, you have some that I don't have, and that's okay. But I've seen a lot of people over the years start to learn game development and get discouraged very, very quickly. Is it because these people are lazy or that they are truly incapable of making a game? I don't think so at all. In fact, I think it's deeper than that. There's a phenomenon that I have witnessed over the years which I can only describe as a learning exhaustion. That exhaustion is tenfold when it comes to making a game. If you have learned a new skill before, especially a hard skill like coding or 3D modeling, at the beginning you have to look up everything. I mean everything. Where is the setting in the preference menu? Where is the preference menu? How do I make this red? Why is the inspector not showing me when I click on this object? Every little thing requires guidance. This is the culprit of this learning exhaustion. Usually after a couple months this goes away and you start to feel like you have some fluency with whatever you're learning. Don't get me wrong, you still have to look stuff up but you're not looking stuff up as frequently. If you're starting from no experience, games are an endless gauntlet of skills and mediums to learn. On an average day, a solo developer could be doing animation, programming, lighting, mechanic design, UI, writing. If you have to learn all of those things at once, you will burn out really quick. All of these topics have an incredible amount of nuance and depth to them. And in order to execute them with any proficiency, you need time to practice each one of them. This is why I think that Blender is a wonderful starting place for aspiring game developers. And if you're willing to indulge me for a moment, I think I have some good reasons to back up this claim. Let's start with the most obvious. Games use 3D. 
Some of you may turn off the video at this point, but let me delve a little deeper into why this is important. Being able to communicate effectively visually is of critical importance in video games. As a game developer, you are constantly teaching your player how to interact with the world. From drawing the player's eye to certain locations in a level, setting a goal for the player, creating a mood, player animation, or even just making sure that your player understands red equals bad, green equals good. The list is endless. All of these things affect the user experience of your game, and they can all be learned through a visual medium like 3D modeling. At its core, the principles that make an interesting Renaissance painting to look at are no different than the principles that make an interesting render, level design, or character. Blender is an excellent tool to teach you perspective, composition, layout design, modeling, animation, texturing, computer performance. See where I'm going here? All of these dovetail into game development beautifully. Which leads me to my next point. Game engines share a similar vocabulary to Blender. The name Game Engine is an incredibly apt one. Much like a car engine connects every single part of a car together and regulates them so that they all work in sync, a game engine takes assets made from 3D modeling software, audio DAWs, graphics renderers, scripts, and wraps them all together into one package, allowing them to work together smoothly, in theory. But there are many similarities between Blender and a game engine like Unity, Godot, or Unreal. Opening up Unity, you will see things that are immediately familiar. A workspace, a scene hierarchy, clicking on an object will show the various components in the inspector. Things that are all very similar to Blender. You can make assumptions that there is a hierarchy that makes up the game object much like a mesh in Blender can be made up of modifiers, particle systems, and materials. Similarly, when you encounter bugs on the game engine side, if you already have a 3D vocabulary, it can give you a frame of reference on how to solve said problem. For instance, if you import a mesh into Unity and see that half of it isn't rendering, you will just know, oh, the normals are flipped, and you won't have to Google for 20 minutes searching desperately for an answer. You'll just know to flip the normals in Blender, re-export it, and go about your day. Same goes for something like adding materials to a model. When you see the default material shader in Unity, you'll already know what albedo, roughness, and normal maps do, and you'll understand, oh, that's how this engine does PBR textures. Since game development is such a multidisciplinary art, by focusing on one area first and getting an understanding of how that medium of game dev functions, when you open the floodgates to the rest of game development, you'll see that everything is interconnected in this beautiful and wild mess. Speaking of which, games are incredibly complex. Even the most simple games require a tremendous amount of effort to get off the ground. Let's do a quick thought experiment. Let's say you want to create a game where a character starts on the left side of the screen, then walks to the right side of the screen, talks to another character, answers a yes or no question, and then finally transitions to an end screen. In order to do just that, a new developer will have to download an engine, get an IDE working, learn how to navigate the engine, create a scene, figure out how to draw a character on screen, figure out how to get that character to move left and right, make it so when the character gets a certain distance away, you have the ability to interact with the other character. That interaction has to trigger a dialogue system. The dialogue system requires you to add UI to your scene. Then you have to create an options menu that allows you to select a different choice. Each choice then has to have a different response. Finally, you have to code something that changes you to a new scene. Oh, and then at the end, you have to make it fun. What I mentioned was just the technical side. Game design is a discipline in itself that requires a tremendous amount of practice and skill. It's a lot. And the weight of this complexity hits so much harder when after all that work, your end result looks like this. Games are not easy. The amount of systems interacting with one another is enough to make even the most calm, aspiring developer spiral. Which brings me to my final point. Gaining confidence in one area will make learning new things easier. Learning to learn is a skill in itself. 
While the skills may be different, the process is almost always the same. The sooner you get used to that process, the better off you'll be. With games being the complex beast that they are, you will constantly have to learn new things on a daily basis. If you have one pillar of game dev that you feel confident in, it will make the other things a little less daunting, in my opinion. And you can use your skill in one area to lean on when you are less confident in others. I call this your anchor skill. It's the skill that you know you can always depend on and use as a means of problem solving other areas that are out of your skill set. For example, I knew going into this game that my 3D modeling skills were far beyond my programming skills, so I decided to have the mechanics be simple and let my art have more complexity. It let my programming skills develop in a more natural way versus trying to make incredibly complex mechanics that were outside of my skill level. This process has been very beneficial for me as a programmer as well. By starting with more simple interactions, I now feel more confident adding in more involved programming in my next game. In fact, I am looking forward to it. I now find programming fun because I was reasonable in my expectations and got more comfortable with programming over time. So find your anchor and let it help you weather the storm that is game development. If you don't know what your anchor skill is at this point, keep experimenting. Keep getting distracted by things that catch your eye. The important part is that you don't stop trying. Keep doing new things and eventually you'll find your voice. For those interested, I'm currently still developing with Shining Eyes and I am making good progress. I am in line to finish very soon. In the meantime, I will be making more videos sharing my experiences over this past year of game development. If you enjoyed the video and are curious to know more about With Shining Eyes, please wishlist it. I would really appreciate it and you will get a notification when it is released. It is a free game, and it always will be. I view this process more as an act of goodwill. To me, this game is a learning experience, and I never intended to make any money off of it. I really just wanted to prove to myself that I can make a game and share with you that you can too. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I really appreciate you watching, and please subscribe if you are interested in following my game development journey. Thanks.